Hey there Capricorn, welcome to your personalized reading for the week of April 25th to May 1st, 2022. This is a general reading, so take whatever resonates and leave behind for others, whatever does not. To get a wider view of the week, be sure to check out your readings for Sun, Moon, and Rising Signs. So in this first row, we're going to look at the energy that you are leaving. In this middle row, we will look at the core vibe of your week. And in this last row, we are getting messages from your future self. So we'll also be getting some context with tarot cards. So in terms of the energy you're leaving, you have this protection card here. So perhaps there was a need to feel protected, perhaps feeling vulnerable, and um, maybe kind of closing yourself off. In this middle row, the core vibe of the week, you have this, this yen card. So this is about, um, you know, feminine energy being receptive, allowing things to come to you, um, which maybe this protection energy was kind of preventing things from, from coming to you or to be receptive and open to things. And in the message from your future self, you have view from above, get the big picture, which is kind of, you know, Stepping back, not looking at the individual particular details, critiquing those, but trying to see how everything really fits together and possibly even looking at things without you being, you know, at the, at the center. So we're going to get some cards here in this energy you're leaving protection. You have the Knight of Wands. Queen of Swords, Page of Swords for this yin receptive core vibe of the week. You have the Tower, Three of Swords, Three of Wands. And in the view from above, get the big picture, you have Two of Wands, Knight of Cups, Ten of Cups. Let me go ahead and re-adjust here. So we're also going to clarify these cards as well, but let's just do um, a broad overview here. So in this protection energy you're leaving, the Queen of Swords right here, Capricorn, this is all about uh, protection. It's about honest communications. It's about, um, you know, cutting off what doesn't serve your best and highest good um, and seeking, seeking truth. The Page of Swords is also about honesty. It can be, um, you know, an immature energy as well as maybe not getting all the facts and possibly kind of spying or just trying to gather a lot of information. With the Knight of Wands here, it's um, it seems like this protection you were doing had to do with some, you know, charming individual that was really kind of confident and um, wanting to take things to a, a new level, a different level, an exciting level with you. And um, you were really kind of protecting yourself. So it seems like the core vibe of this week is allowing the receptive, the receptive aspects to uh, occur and it leads to the tower, which is, you know, divine intervention, revealing that whatever belief 
was there as the foundation um, is kind of like crumbles away and exposes the truth with the three of swords it's really there's disappointment there and three of wands is kind of you know uh, a sense of wanting to explore something different wanting help even so in the view from above message from your future self you have two of wands knight of cups ten of cups it's a sense of kind of like hey um i've been in this kind of comfort zone i know there's something out there that i want to experience and it's this true concept of love you know someone who's coming in with good intentions um wears their heart on their sleeve and really has the goal of you know being um not only happy in themselves and making you happy uh but wanting their like that happily ever after whatever it is that um well we'll look at that because the ten of cups is you know different things to different people for what their happily ever after is and sometimes it's just the um ability to experience a range of emotions frustration happiness joy um sadness grief um apathy <laughs> basically and be able to recognize those and just move out of it and then go back to this area of being you know open and receptive to love giving and receiving love so um what i'm kind of getting is there's this maybe being protective this protection area is like you no know, there's certain like boundaries i have um i'm not going to get swept away from by this i'm you know really suspicious of what's going on i might um you know look online to see you if i trust who you are and your attention intentions and then it's like this week you um have this like realization that what you were you know thinking if you open your heart and let things in um it really actually led to some type of disappointment possibly like betrayal and um then here it's kind of like hey this is all part of life lessons because you're not looking for the the quick in and out person who's just like chasing the next great thing you're looking for someone who is really um intentional about what they kind of are offering but that's just, that's on the surface so let's see let's see if these cards change somewhat let's look at the queen of swords over the in the protection area so you have the moon um which is kind of not having clarity queen of swords is really about clarity you can see here her head is above the clouds um queen of swords is all about using logic intellect um facts weighing costs benefits uh, to analyze the situation queen of swords is not a fan of not seeing all the aspects that are there not knowing what's in the environment to take into consideration to um make you know certain ideas um what's interesting about uh the queen of swords you can see you know you have these uh this butterfly you got a bird up here and a bird um on this throne here is basically 
you know, things that are associated with the element of air that can rise above, can see things from a clear view. So they're getting the big picture. Um, if you've ever noticed, at least where I live, butterflies, I don't notice butterflies and birds flying at nighttime. Um, that's usually when they're asleep. So definitely the Queen of Swords is not a fan of not being able to see the landscape clearly and knowing what might be there. Um, but also, so in the traditional Rider Wright Smith Queen of Swords, there's like on this uh, the extended arm, there's like a cord that's hanging down that is kind of cut. And my understanding is that the that's a cord that tied the Queen of Swords once to fear and anxiety that has been cut away. I don't see a similar one in this deck or similar imagery, but basically based on, you know, going from the Page of Swords to the Knight of Swords to getting grounded, understanding a little bit more, getting some maturity, Queen of Swords is really not about jumping to fear and anxiety but also because the Queen of Swords is being, you know, putting up the protections. So this, you know, facing the moon card is something that the, the Queen of Swords would, you know, be cautious about, would have certain um, ground rules, when to take the next step, where to look to make sure that, you know, the um, pathway is clear things along those lines. So definitely um, there's a sense of trying to, to fight that because also the moon is about trusting intuition and trusting your, your instincts. And maybe even, you know, the Queen of Swords has instincts, has desires. So it's almost like, where do you draw the line? So let's look at the Page of Swords. You have the seven of wands, which is about having like inner conviction and knowing. Um, Page of Swords has less life experience or experiences in general than um, this seven of wands um, individual. The way that's the way I see it is that this. Seven, seven of Wands, they're standing their ground, um, and the six wands that are kind of coming up and pushing this person into like a corner um, is the six of wands that uh, is, you know, people in their community that at one point really stood behind this individual and even lifted them up. But now it's like they're questioning what this person believes in. So here with the Page of Swords, I do get a sense that there was some kind of trying to investigate um, a certain sense of belief, um, possibly about this, this Knight of Wands, which we're gonna go ahead and clarify right now. You have the 10 of Wands here which is about, you know, a burden and really not even seeing things clearly. You can see this person in the Ten of Wands has, you know, their face covered by all these wands, but really has no idea about really where they're going, but charging for it because that's what they want. So let's jump over to the core vibe of the week. I wanna see what the Three of Wands is about. Because the imagery on the tower, that looks just unfortunate. Three of Swords, that just looks, you know, upsetting. Um, so, but the Three of Wands is really kind of wanting something different, like being hopeful um, and kind of really planning out um, the way that they're going to grow and expand an idea, a business. Um, so let's look at that. 
you have a seven of cups. So here it's as if this receptive feminine energy, it was just like, let's, it's just like throwing stuff to the wall and hope, hope it sticks. Like there could be a lot of good things if we just be, you know, open to what's coming our, our way right now. And, you know, possibly it can grow into something. What is it going to grow into? It could be a lot of these different things, but hopefully it's the good thing. And it's not the snake in the cup. And it's not this like red, um, you know, ghost looking sheep or this dragon. So it was really almost about tapping in the to the receptive energy and allowing things to happen, but really not sure about where it would go. I mean, I guess you're never sure, but Queen of Swords usually would have a conversation. But, you know, maybe Knight of Wands wasn't honest about it. We'll see. Let's see what the tower brings. Tower brings nine of pentacles. So really, you know, at the even when the divine intervention comes in and like kicks off like the ego aspect that's um, or the false beliefs, the ego and the false beliefs surrounding this tower there's still an individual who really has accomplished a lot and um, works hard and is independent so in terms of you know finding a place or a way to build a new tower it should provide some comfort that um, that you're a strong individual that you are able to kind of, um, you know, pick pick yourself up, dust yourself off, still be, you know, uh, what's the word? Not royalty, elegant, elegant and sophisticated. So let's take a look here in terms of the Three of Swords. You have the world. So that's about completing a cycle. And that's also, you know, completing something. Usually it's a victory. Um, and then also a rebirth. But it maybe it's a victory in that you, you know, came to realize the truth. Um, Three of Swords is something that is you know difficult to work through but um, you're dealing with swords which is about communication and truth um, ideas and so if you're experiencing it you can really take a look at what's there you know it really allows you to kind of see how you built the tower in the first place um, but it could be also you know this person in the Nine of Pentacles, uh, even though there's like a little snail there at the bottom, you know, things are kind of slow, um, and there's this hooded uh, falcon there, there's like a, you know, like a castle or house, a stable or something in the background. So it seems like they're, you know, very well taken care of in the material sense, but they're alone there. Um, there's no one else there. So it could be that, you know, the tower was kind of like, hey, maybe I'm alone because I have too many walls and I'll, you know, I'll just try it. Let's see what happens when I let my walls down. Now it's kind of like, okay, well, maybe that, that situation wasn't a great idea. So let's, let's see here. Um, it seems though, Capricorn that you are even though the tower and the three of swords aren't great cards you have other cards here that are pretty good pretty great cards you know you end up with the ten of cups like um, you know 
joy and happiness and fortune after difficult experience. Um, so I'm not going to say it's going to be super easy breezy for you, but it's a, it's something that fortunately you look at as, okay, that's over with and done. This is what I learned. Um, and I am going to now move forward, start a different journey um, with this information and knowledge. So let's take a look at the Two of Wands. So the Two of Wands and the Three of Wands are very similar, but the difference is, you can see at least in, in this version of the Two of Wands and the Three of Wands, that the Three of Wands, they're kind of hovering over this edge here. There's not even like um, a barrier where, you know, in some states, some countries, um, whoever owns that property is probably not going to um, be happy if someone just like fell off. But in the Two of Wands, there's like this balcony. There's that protection. There's a little bit of barrier. It's not as high as this tower, um, not really built up, but it's at least some type of guard. And the concepts are very, their concepts are, are kind of similar in the sense of wanting something else, wanting more, and really a desiring to grow and expand, pursue their passions. Three of Wands is a little bit more, you know, they're outside of the castle. They're more um, open than this Two of Wands. So it seems like for you to, this message from your future self, for you to get the big picture, you need a little bit of protection um, so that you can actually see out, feel protected, and kind of, you know, take take a look at what's what you truly want and what this whole thing means in the large scheme of things. And you can see here, it's like this person in two of wands is looking in the past or looking this way and seeing like everything that happened and is like, hey, I'm, I'm still going to have a little bit of protection here. Um, and I'm going to have my, my cell phone in my hand so I can, you know, get more information that I don't have just by looking out. So let's clarify it. You have the tower. So I think it's basically here, I honestly think it's just a new way to kind of have your foundation and being aware that the tower that was built up when you were overprotected um, and just, it, you know, that's a different kind of foundation that you're going to build up now. Like, I think this is more about having this bigger view of things so you don't really have this experience or you're prepared for it or, you know, it doesn't come as a shock for you or even like to even give more understanding of why that happened. So let's look at the Knight of Cups. You have the Queen of Cups. So really, it's I, I think um, Capricorn, you were aware that this situation here, like you were protecting yourself for a reason. Um, you're protecting yourself for a reason. And once you see that, like, you know, when something is true that comes to you, it's going to be kind of something that you're not going to need to have your walls up because you are, you know, you're looking at things from the bigger picture. You, it's not about what you know um, and what they stand for. And, you know, it's more like, is there truth is in, and it doesn't even, there's no sword here. It's more truth from the heart. So it's something where 
you're going to almost need to take a step back and look at how you're approaching the individuals that you're even maybe attracted to. Maybe, you know, something here is like you, um, to some degree, this Ten of Wands could be you've had this type of attraction to this person before, or even people like them. Um, maybe how they look, how they carry themselves, their confidence, their um, their charm, whatever it is, that's something that you've dealt with before. That's possibly why you've had to have this protection. Um, and so here, this get this big picture is probably more like you figuring out more about your emotions and being in touch with who you are so that, you know, this, this situation in the moon, you're really, that, that's something that you would be able to manage because you're fully in touch with your intuition. Um, so let's take a look at the Ten of Cups here. And you have the Magician. And that's, you know, about confidence. That's about um, being able to communicate your wants, your needs, having the resources and skills available to manifest into reality what it is you truly desire with your heart. And so even though this, uh, you know, weak is might be a little um, thorny for some people. It'll be also eye-opening and lead to something a lot better. So I'm hoping that this reading provides a helpful perspective of the week, and we'll see you next time. Take care.